are you going? Come, come back. Is, is it because you're expecting us to be like singing and dancing in our Christmas jammies? So we need to put those on again? All right. Okay. Can you look away for a second when I get changed? Okay, ready. They're really super tight now. Super tight and they smell like attic. That's okay. That's okay. Congratulations. Honestly, I, I first of all have to say, I love how out of the gate, the promotional video you guys put together for the book, you already like, listen, before you guys make fun, we're gonna pick fun at ourselves before you can come after us, right? Yes, I mean, we, I mean, it's the internet. So there's always some fun comments. I mean, people like to comment on my appearance. Why always with the middle-aged ladies appearance, guys? Get more creative, come on. Middle-aged, uh-uh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking we're probably about the same age, so that means I'm middle-aged too. <laughs> I think I'm older than you, but that's okay. But like, it's they need to get more creative with their yes. comments, right? Yes. I know. I know guys don't get picked on as much, although you have, you've, had, you've, had, you've had your share too. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I get picked on a lot. Trust me. I'm like, I'm a middle-aged, balding, white dude rapping. So fellas, yeah. fellas, yeah. do you want to go back to class? Oh, yeah. Then take it, take it, take it, take that thing to class. Baby, I got mad. I deserve all of it too. <laughs> um, I'm very corny. I dance around. I've had plenty of thought pieces written about me. It's all good. <laughs> but you're not balding, I will say. You got great oh, hair. Sir, that's a good head of hair. I know. I have less hair than I did five years ago. I used to be like a chia pet. So I understandably, <laughs> yeah, I, I should probably just deal with it and move forward. But honestly, I was just talking about before, you have truly, I don't care if you're an actor, an athlete, and an artist, you haven't made it until you get the critics. That's when you know you've arrived, right? Yeah, and I have to say, I, I, was it 2014 SNL parodied us? And I was like, we're done. Like we could yeah. just like, well, let's just like hang up the Christmas jammies and we're done. We have to do no more in our career. We're done. And people are like, oh, because I mean, obviously they ripped us, you know, they like made fun of our family jammy, whatever. But I, I could, people like, they were like, really like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, are you kidding yeah. me? It's the that's the thing that's best ever thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And we went to S we just by coincidence had tickets to go see SNL a few weeks later. And we got into the after party and we met the writers of this skit. And it was their first skit that had ever made air. Wow. And like, I'm sorry. And again, it was like one of those, like, please don't Everyone apologize. kept apologizing to like, us. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It was amazing. Well, you've clearly succeeded. You've had like billions of views. You've got millions of followers. And so why was it the right time now to say, oh, I remember reading is cool. People, <laughs> there are some people out there who still do that. Let's write a book. Uh, <laughs> we, we usually write about what's going on in our lives. That, that's If you look at our videos, it's about what's going on with our family. It's about what's going on with our relationship. That's, that's we write what we know. So over the last five years, living and working together, which is something everyone is getting familiar with now. Uh, I see you're coming to us live from your living room. So you're familiar with this as well. Um, you can get into some tight spots with your loved ones because you're kind of in each other's business. And that started happening to us about five years ago. And rather than writing a corny three minute video about it, our journey through counseling and learning how to communicate better with each other was a big part of what was going on in our lives. And, you know, we thought writing a book would be a much better medium than a cheesy video. Right. <laughs> yeah. And all, all of the stories that we told you were unresolved before we learned how to fight correctly. Wow. Yeah. And I think that that's what it is. And we don't view, I mean, fighting, by the way, for us, isn't that table flipping. It's not screaming and yelling. It is literally like these, we didn't know how the, the right language to use even. So when we went in and like talked to our counselor, I'm like, tell me the words to say, because I'm not saying it right. And I mean, I was, I mean, we, 50, 50, we were both screwing it up. And I think that we view now fighting as a way to almost like get to know each other better. Huh. I know like the boundaries he's putting up, like I get to know like what he's trying to protect with those boundaries. I try to, I know what, what, what his vulnerable spots are. And we said in the book that, we have these rules of war, basically, you know, there's no cussing or name calling and you know how to hurt your partner, right? So don't do it. What do you think has been the, in writing the process of writing this book? You had probably obviously do a lot of work and, and therapy and discussions. What was the one surprising thing you learned about each other in that process that you didn't even after 16 years of marriage realize? That's a really good question. <laughs> oh, the eyebrows up, it's up. 
<laughs> Do you want to go first? No, you like, go first. Um, <laughs> Unless it's like a really I, terrible. I didn't know how many things she wanted. Um, <laughs> and I think it's fine, but like I, we had been walking on eggshells and I think a lot of married couples do that. Um, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you were surprised that I was okay with that. Maybe because yeah. you didn't know how I was going to feel when I, when you said, I'm just wanted. wondering like what you, I mean, we, we write a lot about some stuff that I want in there, but like what other, stuff? Oh, I knew you wanted that. Um, <laughs> what was, well, hold on. What, what was that? Was that like a night with Henry Cavill or something? I'm like, <laughs> no, there was no, we, no, we have an article about, about sex where we both wanted right. the same thing oh, okay. and we just didn't know how to tell each other that, that we, that we wanted that. Who so we have to um, after. Well, we have, we have like a whole chapter and a half on the sexy time stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and I think that asking for what you want in a marriage, I think you know, we, we should get it embroidered on a pillow that mature people ask for what they want, but believe it or not, it's so hard sometimes with the person you love the most to ask for what you really want. And that trend, that's a lot of times, according to our counselor, it revolves around issues in the bedroom mm -hmm. about asking sure. for what you want. If you want, you want it more, you want it different. You want it like that. And like so people get really nervous about that. So we talk a little bit about that. And isn't it crazy um, that the thing that kind of brings you together? I mean, like that initial attraction and let's be honest. I mean, that, a lot of the fireworks stuff, in the beginning it's hard to maintain, you know, I'm yeah. single, but it's like still in any relationship, but, and then you're almost embarrassed to talk to your partner who you're the most intimate and sharing with, but you're like, uh, what if I, and you have to know that it's okay to like, it, it's, you're not gonna be laughed at for asking about these things. One of my favorite parts about the book is some, is some of the science that you get from the book. Like you learn that you shouldn't fight when you're angry because the, um, the center of your brain, the Broca area that contains speech basically surrenders itself. So you can't speak clearly. Oh, that wow. just happens. It's the same thing that happens. Like if you're in a fight with an animal as a caveman, the other really interesting piece of science is that novelty releases dopamine. So like meeting a new person or talking to a stranger or the first time you have an intimate moment with your partner releases these unbelievable pleasure chemicals. So no wonder we were just fine with whatever when we started out together because our brain was flooding us with dopamine. Totally. So once you, I mean, the science of it's true. Once you get used to it, um, you're really only left with what you want and what she wants. Yeah. And, and like you get into the bed every yeah. night with like face cream and Invisalign and it's like, uh. <laughs> it's different. Everything's different. And so like, but once you understand that and you can destigmatize it and say, oh, let's talk about what it is that we actually want. It makes more sense. And you don't have to feel bad about not jumping each other's bones every 15 minutes like you did <laughs> when you were first dating, because that's like natural drugs being released in your head when that happens. Yeah. And so like next time she says to you, listen, you know, honey, I would like I for you to dress up like the Duke from Bridgerton. You have to say giddy up, right? I mean, get on that horse, baby. <laughs> I would like her to dress up as the dude from Bridgerton. <laughs> that, like, I'm sorry, he's the best looking man I've ever seen. He's one of the best. Like, and I'm humans. straight as it comes, but he's a good looking is that, guy. That, is that your man crush? This is this breaking news? That, I don't think it's breaking news. <laughs> I, think anybody, well established. Yeah, I don't think anybody who watches the video is like, I'm like, you're right, honey. He's very, very attractive. Honestly, I'm sure the book has been so cathartic and so you like renewing, like you said, of all those things in your relationship and probably this uh, turning no pun intended, a new chapter on the relationship. It has been um, such a learning experience, I have to say. And, and, and it's different, right? We do these goofy videos with a lot of jazz hands. And so it's unexpected that yeah. putting a book out about our relationship, but we've done about like a thousand of those videos. But I, yep. I really feel like this book might be the most important thing we've ever shared. You guys take care. Congratulations again. Thank you for the time. Okay, Thank bye. you so much. Tell the Duke hi when you ride to Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs>